Hey everyone, thanks for joining us here today at Book Bladder. If you're new here, I'm Dave. This is Olive. And we talk about books of all types to help spread the joy of reading. So today we want to do a, a little bit of a different video. We, in a recent video we had talked, when we were talking about Halloween stuff, we had talked about some of the Halloween movies that we had watched to get in the mood for the season. And one of the movies that we forgot to mention, I can't believe we forgot, is Dark Harvest. I, I can't believe we forgot to mention it, but you know, when the camera's rolling, you forget all sorts of things. That's how it goes. So, but that's okay because that means we can now talk about it as part of a dedicated Dark Harvest video because that movie is based on a book. So today we can talk about the book, the short story, and the movie, and a little bit about how those things are related. So first, let us talk about the book. This is all. This is where it all started. We, if you're, you know, been here for a while, you know that every October we read Halloween themed books. And our favorite one so far, which we read a couple years ago, is this one called Dark Harvest. So this was published in 2006 by Norman Partridge. I think it was originally published in a different form, one of those limited, limited edition cemetery dance books. But this, uh, this is a tour of copy. And this basically it won, it won the Bram Stoker Award at the time, and for good reason. And I've talked about this before on, on the channel because we highly recommend this book. But just to recap, essentially what this is about is it's about a, there's this unnamed town, small town, and for reasons that are unexplained explicitly, uh, everybody in the town uh, has always lived there and nobody ever leaves. And it's another inexplicable thing about the town is this yearly ritual that happens on Halloween, where every Halloween, this entity called the October Boy arises out of the cornfield and he's a traditional horror uh, character. He's his jack-o'-lantern head, his limbs are made out of vines, his innards are Halloween candy. So he's a, he's a great, scary Halloween entity. And this October Boy tries to make it to, the, on Halloween night, tries to make it to the cent, the church at the center of town. And I think, I think it's like the, the, if he actually makes it, like the crops fail. I think that happened one time in history or something. Or, or I don't know, maybe that was the legend. But in any event, in order to stop the October boy, there is this annual hunt of all the teenage boys try to hunt down the October boy to prevent him from getting to this church in the center of town. So they, for a couple days, they lock up all the teenage boys, so they make them really hungry and ravenous and stir crazy. And then on Halloween night, they let them all out. And so they go on the hunt to chase down this October boy. And whoever brings down the October boy, that's their ticket out of town. And then their family gets a reward, like a nice house and stuff like that. And so there's, you follow a couple different characters in the story. You know, there's, there, there's a couple of bad, you know, there's a bad sheriff and a bad butcher. And they're connected with this mysterious harvest guild who kind of like behind the scenes runs things and oversees this annual hunt. And so, you know, you follow a couple of conflicted characters. And in particular, you follow this guy, this teenage boy, Pete, as, as he goes through the night. And uh, to some extent, his friend, he has a female friend, Kelly. And girls are actually not allowed out during the hunt, but she goes out and has some trouble because of it. And so you, you, you follow them, and it's, it's, it's a very, very um, action-packed, you know, somewhat violent, very action-packed, exciting story. So the great thing about, one of the reasons that I love this book so much, and I think a lot of people do, is that I think this book actually does a lot of things, and it's not a very long book, and it does a lot of things for how many pages it is. Number one, it's just a very very atmospheric Halloween story and a very exciting one. It's, it's, a, it's very fast-paced. It's very thrilling. You're trying to find out the mystery. You're trying to see what happens with the hunt. Um, so it's all very exciting in that way. But in addition to that... It's, it's a little bit of a, of a social commentary, uh, you know, and, and I think that, you know, Norman Partridge does this interesting thing with the narrative where most of the story is told in this third person narrative, you know, about the different characters, but he periodically switches to the second person and will speak to you as the reader. And, you know, just to say things like, and, but, but you know how this goes, you know, and things like that. And I think that, I, I think that that's Partridge's uh, vehicle for pulling you out of the story 
and 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 providing a little commentary on, you know, what on how how society has this peculiar habit of of just doing things for just because that's what everybody does. You know, one generation doing what the previous generation did just because that's what and doing the same things year after year, not because there's any rational reason for it or even seeking rational answers for it, but just because that's the way people have always done it and that's just the way it's always been done. So uh, it was this was a really remarkable book, I thought, especially like I said, especially for such a short one. There's a lot that happened in these pages. So we have talked about this a number of times because we highly recommend it for those reasons. Now, a few years later, after this book, Norman Partridge wrote a short story to follow up on it. And that appeared in this. Uh, this is one of those limited, limited uh, edition Cemetery Dance which w publications, which is a collection of short stories by Norman Partridge called Johnny Halloween, Tales of the Dark Season. And in this book, he has a story called the Jack-O-Lantern, A Dark Harvest Tale. So that was in 20, he published that in 2010, and that was also a great story, very much in the tradition of the original Dark Harvest book. And that story, that's sort of a little supplemental tale where we get a little more insight into this mysterious Harvest Guild and, and how, how those people operate and how that those people how that um, harvest guild basically survives over time uh, very well written again very uh, exciting story especially for how few pages it was and so again it was like a lot happening in a, in a very short space so that story was excellent and a great great supplement to the, the original dark harvest book now in october of this year, October 2023, they just finally put out the movie that they had been talking about for years called Dark Harvest, based on the original novel. And the Dark Harvest movie is like the book and the short story, in mine and Olive's opinion, another winner. We thought that they did a really good job with this movie. So, if you're one of those people that is, you know, if the, it, the the movie is not exactly like the book. So if you're one of those people that gets upset when it, when there are changes in the movie and it doesn't closely follow the original book, you know, you that's totally okay. There's plenty of people like that. Um, you know, everybody's got their got their own um, preferences. But if you were one of those people, then don't watch the movie because it's going to upset you because there are a couple changes from the book. Now, we thought that the, the, the movie did a great job of both follow, being mostly faithful to the book and what the, you know, basically faithful to the setting and the theme of the book, but also adding its own little flavor to it. So the in the movie... We thought it was very good and, and and a great Halloween movie, but you don't need to you don't either to read the book or watch that movie. It doesn't need to be Halloween. You can watch these independently uh, of the holiday. But in the movie, it was first of all, it was like really it was shot really well and like the cinematography of the thing. It was like in this very like sort of crisp. Most of the movie was like in this sort of like crisp, dark scenery. That was just, it was, it was very cool, visually very cool and atmospheric and really put you in the mood for the, you know, the setting of that story. But it was also the, the, the basics of the story in the movie was, I thought, pretty faithful to the book. It, it was, you know, same kind of town, same mystery, same October boy entity, the same hunt and all of that. So the, that basic underlying story was the same as well as as the theme and and even the movie starts out with that same kind of funny narrative twist um that i talked about that was in the book and it's but there are a couple of changes which is in in the book we follow this we follow a couple of different conflicted characters but the main one we follow is this guy pete along with his his friend kelly and in the in the movie 
they they add a bit to that. Um, it, it's not Pete. It's this. Oh boy, what was his name? Now I forget what his name was. But anyway, the main character in the movie. You, in the movie, we start out seeing the winner of the hunt the previous year, and then the rest of the movie is about that winner, the last year's winner's younger brother, who is now determined to win the hunt. So it adds this whole little family element to the story, which is a major change. You know, even though the underlying story is the same, that is a major change in who the principal character is. There's also, it, that also leads to a very different ending for the movie. So, um, so those are, even though what I would say most of the movie follows the book, those are major changes, both, you know, in terms of the principal character and where the story goes. So we actually very much liked that and we, we enjoyed it. We don't think those changes made it better than the book. We just think the changes made it different than the book. And we're one of those ones where we don't, in our opinion, we don't need the, the book to closely follow, the movie to closely follow the book. You know, in, in our view, every time you change a medium, whether it's to a comic book or an audio book or a movie or, or a TV show, every single one of these, when you change mediums, it's an adaptation. It is never going to be the same. There are going to be changes. The question is, how, how extensive are those changes? So if you make changes, again, this is just olives in my opinion, but if you make changes that are conducive to changing the medium for that story and make that work better and give you a new story, then that's great. And, and that's what our experience was. It was a lot, like I said, so much of the same story, but it ended up giving us a different story. So we actually got two great stories out of it, one in the book and one in the movie. And I can't even say really which was a better set of, um, of events, let's say. They were, both, they were both in the same basic setting and then they were both done really well and told really good but slightly different stories. So um, we would very much recommend the movie, just like we would very much recommend the book and the short story. So, hey, hey. Come on. I thought we agreed on our opinion about this about this movie. Oh. Okay. All right. So anyway, um, that's that's it. That's our uh, the dar our, our review of the Dark Harvest trilogy, the the original Dark Harvest novel from two thousand six, the the short story Jack O' Lantern from two thousand ten, which appears in Johnny Halloween: Tales of the Dark Season, and the October twenty twenty three movie Dark Harvest. We would highly recommend all of them, and we'd be curious to see. What all of you think ha uh, and i imagine probably a lot of people haven't seen the movie yet so we'd be really curious to th to hear what people think of that movie if you if you see it if you've seen it or if you do go out and see it let us know what you think and let us know what you think about the changes between the book and the movie and whether you liked it and 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 still had a good time with the movie even though there were those differences so um okay so that'll do it for today i think um right you got anything else Olive, on this on this matter no she doesn't have anything else so as always, thank, thanks so much for watching. Um, if you want to leave any, obviously we, we welcome any comments about, about these books or the movie. But if you don't want to leave anything substantive, you can always leave Olive a puppy emoji because she always loves to see those. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you very soon. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll see you next time.